What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and it would appear there's already a plot cooking up against Trump, starting out with some of the most deranged Democrats out there in California, as well as a new story that not only did Kamala Harris blow through a billion dollars, but she has a long list of people who are yet to be paid. They fear that she won't be paying them. And I imagine that they're probably picking up some bad habits, probably stressing out. Thankfully, I have a great alternative for you. Check this out. Huge shout out to this video's sponsor, Fume. Have you heard of the flavored air company that's quickly becoming the leading alternative to vaping and smoking? Well, it's a whole new movement towards better habits led by the sponsor of today's video, that is Fume. Fume is a flavored air device that's perfect for anyone who's looking to break away from bad habits or just wants something enjoyable to use. It's nicotine-free, non-toxic, and completely guilt-free. What makes Fume so special is how customizable it is. It's got delicious flavors like crisp mint and orange vanilla. Orange vanilla is still my favorite. Fume is not a vape. There's no vapor. You can use it anywhere. It's not addictive, no nicotine, and it's made to fidget with, which I do all the time. Fume also constantly invests in third-party studies to ensure their safety of their products and multiple third-party toxicology reports and studies have been done on the inhalation and digestion of plant compounds that they use in their cores, and they're always committed to funding more. My personal favorite remains the orange vanilla. I I just love it, but obviously raspberry lemon is a great one. I didn't think I would like at first, but I really like it. But I really found it to be relaxing and just kind of a great way there. If I'm feeling like going back to a bad habit, I just grab this and I'm good. This holiday season, you can give the gift of better habits with Fume. Head to tryfume.com slash quartering and use code quartering to get a free Fume topper when you order a journey pack. It's the perfect addition to make your gift even more special. And if you're lucky, you could even win one of Fume's limited edition gold-plated devices this holiday season. Tryfume.com slash quartering or just scan the QR code on the screen and grab yours now and make someone's holiday unforgettable. Now. 48 hours after election, one thing is clear. The deranged Democratic plot to sabotage Trump has already begun, warns Kennedy. Brace yourself for the fight for the future of the country has begun. In just the 48 hours since President-elect Donald Trump delivered a schoolyard booty stomp to Wokistan, one thing has become frightening, cl frighteningly clear. Despite unequivocal evidence of an outright mega romp, in an electoral college avalanche, a rare Republican popular, victor popular vote victory, and likely GOP-controlled Congress, left-wing lunatics are still clinging to their oat milk latte delusions like Joe Biden to a baby's foot on Halloween. To the progressively deranged, they may have lost the election battle, but the war is still raging. And with Donald, Donald Mussolini, Stalin, Lex Luthor, Trump in the White House, it's going to be a no-holds-barred brawl. Re-listen to Kamala's concession cackle on Wednesday, and you'll hear the subliminal pitch to be the next leader of the resistance. We will continue to wage this fight in the voting booth and in the courts and in public square. The fight for our freedom will take hard work. In fact, every Democrat blowhard who ever had designs on power for the presidency is sounding like Dirty Harry today. We will fight them to the death, said New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy on Wednesday. Chunky Illinois Governor J.D. Pritzler warned Trump, you come for my people, you come through me. That's a terrifying prospect, uh, given that Pritzler is built like a defensive lineman who ate another defensive lineman. Coiffed California, coiffed Californian Gavin Newsom, barely hiding his giddiness over the Golden State's nemesis falling flat on her face, is convening an emergency legislative session to whiteboard all the ways to try and blackball the new White House. That's not very promising. Clearly, the Democratic establishment is lining up for their starring role in a noble Trump resistance. But can America still rely on the patriotic deep state, I mean the federal bureaucracy, to keep the ship of the state sailing straight? I wouldn't bet on it. None other, than, none other than Miles Taylor, the infamous anonymous White House whistleblower who penned unsigned screds from within the Trump administration in 2018, emerged from obscurity to encourage pencil pushers everywhere to sabotage Team Trump. Bureaucrats might be the only reason Mr. Trump holds back from doing something unlawful, or at least if they fail, they will be the people there to tell their fellow Americans the truth, he wrote in the New York Times the morning after the election. Surely we can rely on the great American mainstream media 
to sort through all this nonsense and speak truth to these trolls. Just kidding. The squawking heads are even worse at reading the room. Here was professional race baiter Joy Reid on election night. Black voters came through for Kamala Harris. White women did not. This will be the second opportunity that white women in this country have to change the way they interact with the patriarchy, she droned. And it wasn't just those lady traders who got joyless Reid and her fellow MSNBCers spitting mad. Black and Hispanic men, apparently, are also the real misogynists, according to those left-wing loons. Joe Scarborough, Scarborough explained that it's misogyny from Hispanic men. It's misogyny from black men. It might be race issues with Hispanics. Isn't calling all black and Hispanic men who voted for Trump racist and misogynist kind of racist? The stinking clown of idiocy quickly drifted from MSNBC across Manhattan to the studios of The View. You know, we saw all this. Boo-hoo, go cry yourself to sleep on a pillow stuffed with $100 bills. Fellow unfunny, unfunny non-comic Stephen Colbert was equally glum. No one gets into this business because everything worked out great. We're built for tough roads. Well, how about not getting paid? One thing I can tell you about shills is they generally stop shilling if they're not getting paid. Like, just as a general rule. Uh, and, and here's some more bad news. Kamala Harris's campaign election eve concert said they cost up to $20 million as staff and vendors now fear they will not be paid. Well, why would they be? Why would they have ever thought that they were going to get paid? That's not like the normal thing, is it? Finger pointing has erupted over Kamala Harris's campaign, blowing up to $20 million on swing state concerts Monday night, hours before the VP spectacular election loss to Donald Trump, prompting concern that everyday staff and vendors won't be paid amid reports that the campaign is now in debt by the same amount. Members of the defeated Harris team tell the Post that the concerts had a ruinous effect on the Democratic campaign coffers, and the fact was no secret, with one planned performance by 90s alt-rock goddess Alanis Morissette getting scrapped to save money. The seven swing state concerts on election eve featured performances from John Bon Jovi in Detroit, Christina Aguilera in Las Vegas, Katy Perry in Pittsburgh, Lady Gaga in Philadelphia, two chains joining Harris November 2nd. By the way, all these people, just so you know, just so we're clear now, so everyone like understands, these people actually don't support Kamala Harris. They were paid to be there. I mean, they were all paid to be there. Cardi B, two ch- and Cardi B's having a meltdown. Stop making fun of me. Stop dunking on me. That's not very nice. Well, you did back the candidate that called half the country garbage, so pardon me if I don't care. Two sources said the Obama campaign alum, Stephanie Cutter, pushed the concert concept as a way to woo lower propensity voters to the polls. While the performers donated their time and talent, the set still required an immense commitment of manpower and financial resources. Oh, they donated it. Oh, okay. I doubt that. I doubt that. Cutter's plans were supported by fellow Obama alum. Why would they think that concerts would get them to go vote? A low propensity voter stays low propensity. What is a free concert from some demonic woman like Lady Gaga going to do? You know, Harris Walls campaign chairwoman, Jen O'Malley, Dylan ultimately approved the get out and vote concert plans, but has since told colleagues in response to a significant internal criticism that she didn't want to do them and that she sat on the idea for weeks. If that was the case, another source pointed out, then O'Malley, Dylan's waffling led to increased production costs because putting uh, concerts together last minute make them cost twice as much. Internal critics also question the role of campaign operations chief Dana Ra, a lot of women, huh? Uh, whose source noted that the Harris Walls purse string was responsible for raising any financial concerns. Well, she didn't say anything. They said they were spending to zero. I guess they overshot zero, quipped one source. They spent a billion dollars. A billion dollars, a billion dollars, and lost, and lost bigly. They lost every single swing state where they had these stupid concerts. It's almost like you have to have policies to run on. I know that seems wild to a lot of people, but it's almost like you need to have a policy. They had huge, huge advanced teams for these concerts, 40 to 60 people in some cities, 
said an insider who told the Post that they were concerned the financial impact on the people who actually worked to elect her. So now she's refusing to pay the people that helped put together these stupid, pointless concerts. Real classy. In the week before the election day, as campaign bosses became aware that nearly all of the more than $1 billion war chest was gone, there were efforts to scale back concert costs, which were expected to run 15 to $20 million. In some cases, they spent more than that. They definitely knew the budget crunch was at the end because they cut talent in some cities because of cost. It didn't work in a single city. Not one. Now, we all knew this. We all knew that regular everyday Americans don't give a damn. Like, they don't care. They don't care about this stuff. Oh, free concert? Cool. I mean, you have John Stewart, F us, F me. I was wrong. John Stewart says liberals didn't expect Trump to win fair and square. Wait, what do they mean? Did they expect some shenanigans? I don't know what that means. Kamala Harris' campaign eviscerated for spending a billion dollars and still losing. What the F? How do you spend a billion dollars? What the F? Said a former Biden staffer infuriated by Harris's team's excuses. Because every corrupt loser along the way got paid, right? Every little community group or woke cause or whatever, everyone got paid. With the, her donor's money, by the way. American taxpayers' money. After raising nearly $4.2 billion, they spent a combined $3.5 billion on the presidential race. Donald Trump's team and affiliated PACs of the Republican National Committee raised $1.8 billion. By the way, they also spent just $750 million of it. Now, that's not nothing, but that is absolutely bonkers. Well, we're going to have to keep a close eye, in particular, what's going on with Carrie Lake right now in Arizona. But for now, make sure to try out Fume. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, and we'll talk to you again real soon.